When Wilt Chamberlain scored 100 points in 1962, the NBA world knew that they had an all-time record on their hands, one that would stand for decades, even centuries. As the league exited the most offensively prominent era in the early 70s, it only became clear that nobody was going to touch this record for quite a while. But everything comes full circle. We have re-entered yet another offensively dominated era. We've witnessed two 70-point games in the span of a week. The last time that happened was… it's never happened. There's already been five 60-point performances this season alone. The last time that occurred was… never. The NBA has been cooking. Or is it overcooked? I mean, it seems like we've gotten to a point where 70 is the new 50 and 60 is the new 40. Or is this simply the evolution of the game that was bound to repeat itself sooner or later? High scoring performances have only gotten greater and greater. Which begs the question, will we ever see another 100 point game? Luka Doncic displayed the fourth highest scoring performance in league history, yet he was still 28 points shy of eclipsing Wilt's total, an entire Devin Booker game worth of points. So who in the NBA today has the greatest possibility of pulling it off? And what would it look like to break this seemingly unattainable 100 point plateau? Well, let's see. To find a player capable of scoring 100 points in an NBA game today, we'd have to take a deep dive to locate an individual who fits the criteria of an elite, efficient, high volume scorer who can get a shot off at any moment. I'm just playing. Those players are littered across today's NBA. And in my opinion, these are 10 players capable of reaching the century mark. You might not agree with some of the chosen players. You may think that others have a better case to reach the triple digit mark. Guys like Shea Gilgis Alexander and Anthony Edwards seem like no brainers, but in my opinion they've yet to reach the peak of their scoring abilities, and until they've done that, they'll remain off the list. Now in order to find the player or players that can catch fire one night and possibly go off for over 100 points, there will be three different criterias, all of which revolve around scoring. Obvious, right? I know. Scoring 100 points would take an absurd amount of shot attempts from everywhere on the court. To accomplish a top 10 scoring performance of all time during this era, you'd have to attempt an average of 37 field goals and 21 free throws. If we were to compare our 10 players' career high attempts from these areas to these averages, we'd get a better understanding of who would be capable of attempting and making this many shots. And now that the three-pointer is worshipped like a god, a player is going to need a whole lot of them to score 100. So we'll use the average amount of three-point attempts from the 10 greatest shooting performances in NBA history as well. We'll then take the differences from these three categories, combine them, and the total will give us a score that will allow us to rank our 10 players in order of least likely to most likely of scoring 100 points. Now let's use Kobe as an example. Kobe's career high in field goal attempts is 50 in his farewell game, 13 higher than the average. His highest mark at the free throw line is 27, and the most he's ever attempted from 3 was 21, 3 higher than the average mark. Now combining the margins from these averages, Kobe finishes with a score of 22, one of the highest ever, representative of being the closest player to reach the 100 point mark. So how do our 10 players rank? Steph Curry is unanimously the greatest shooter we've ever seen, but what separates him from the rest is his ability to catch fire, like some type of inferno. He's regarded as one of the few players that if he got hot for an extended period of time, that a 100 point game is a true possibility. Damian Lillard is also one of those guys. So what do the numbers tell us? With identical career highs in 3 point attempts, and Dame having the slight edge with free throw and field goal attempts, he statistically has a greater chance than Steph to reach the century mark. It doesn't claim that Lillard is better than Curry, it just simply comes down to play style and opportunity. When you consider Steph's high efficiency and low volume free throw shooting, 
and the fact that he spent the majority of his career with numerous Hall of Fame teammates by his side, it only limits his opportunities of shooting a high number of field goals or just simply playing a different style of basketball altogether. Dame's career arc has been the opposite, slightly higher volume and a lack of star teammates to help carry the load, basically resulting in a one-man offense on that side of the court. Steph's efficiency in play within the system play style limits the chance to go for 100. The same goes for guys like Jokic, Durant, Tatum, and surprisingly, Luka. Jokic's low volume pass first style of play simply results in less scoring opportunities for himself. And Luka is similar in a way. Despite scoring 73 a week ago as currently the second greatest scorer in the NBA, he also ranks third in assists. He doesn't mind making the extra pass, and when the shots are there, he'll take them. Many of his highest scoring games are done with high efficiency, not high volume. And for Tatum and KD, they have the ability to get a shot off at any time, but they opt to play the right way and within the system without forcing anything. Durant has directly stated this, that's his style of play, he doesn't force it. And with other superstars by their side for the majority of their careers, the need to go crazy isn't there. They can, but don't. Now this leaves us with four players. Embiid, Booker, Giannis, and Mitchell. All with career highs over 64. And three of the four players have notched 70 plus point games. Who gets the nod? The guards? Or the bigs? The 10 highest scoring performances in NBA history consist of one center, two shooting guards, and two point guards. History seems to tell us that with the exception of Wilt, guards have a higher chance of achieving record-breaking scoring performances. Booker and Mitchell are elite three-level scorers. They each have a career high in free throw attempts over 25, both coming in their 70-point games. Donovan finds himself below the average of field goal attempts, while Book jacked up 40 shots for his career high. And from three, Mitchell is right on the average, while Booker reached a mark of just 15 as more of a mid-range scorer throughout his career. Add up the numbers and Mitchell ends with a score of 3, good enough for the 5th spot on our list. And for now, Booker earns the top spot. Let's move down to the block. Joel Embiid has been on a scoring rampage this season, and the secret sauce to averaging 36 points per game in the NBA? Free throws. With a career high of 27 attempts, Embiid is 6 over the average. From the field he finds himself on the over by 4, but the lack of volume from 3 limits his potential of pulling off a 100 point game. That leads to a score of 5, and at the moment tying him with Booker for the number 1 spot. As a non-jump shooter, Giannis immediately handicaps himself with a career high of just 12 threes attempted, 6 below the average. But he finds himself on the uptick with 39 field goal attempts, which now leads us to free throws. As much as Giannis is completely inefficient at the free throw line, it hasn't stopped him from driving into the paint with a career high 32 free throw attempts in a single game, landing him a final score of 7. I understand that a guy who can't shoot threes finishing at the top spot can be controversial. After all, this formula isn't perfect, it's just meant to give us an estimate of who is most likely to reach the 100 point mark if everything were to go in that player's favor. Luka finishing 9th is an absolute crime. Given his age and multi-dimensional skill set, he passes the eye test with flying colors. But the only thing that worries me is the way he scores. Dribble, 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 shoot. He expands too much energy. However, Giannis ranking 1st isn't far-fetched. Wilt had a similar playstyle. He was an unstoppable force in the paint. He was fouled just as much if not more than Giannis was as a 51% free throw shooter on his career. The 100 point game was a 1 in a million moment for Wilt. He was sent to the line for 32 free throws, in which he shockingly made 28 of them. The circumstances were literally perfect to pull it off, making the case for any player to score 100 next to impossible. Even if Giannis were to attempt his career high from the field, from 3, and from the free throw line in the same game, while also shooting at his career averages, he would only score 70 points. 
But let's say Giannis had an all-time career night and shot 17% better from the field, from three, and from the line while also attempting his career highs from those areas. And the result? Not very surprising. He'd still be 11 points shy of the century mark. It is inconceivable to see a player score 100 points again. In fact, if we took every player from our list and each of them had an above average shooting night while also attempting their career highs from the field, from three, and the line, there still wouldn't be a single player capable of scoring over 90 points, let alone 100. What Wilt was able to pull off on March 2nd, 1962 is viewed as an anomaly. The circumstances of that game lined up to be absolutely perfect. As we re-enter another offensively driven era, the thought of someone scoring over 100 points has been bounced around as we witness a chain of high scoring performances that we haven't seen in the history of the NBA. Even in the cases where an individual seems to be unconscious for an entire game, or when teammates force feed a player in hopes of watching history, <clears throat> cat, that triple digit milestone is still so far away. It raises the same question. Will we ever see another 100 point game? After what we've just learned, my definitive answer is no. It's a one in a million performance. And in our case, that one has already been achieved. Let me know in the comments who you guys think can actually pull off a 100 point game, or if it's even possible in the first place. And I'll see you in the next one.